this is my savings, right? There's no debt attached to this. There's no counterparty risk attached to this. What's this stuff? It's debt. It is a Federal Reserve note. A note is a debt instrument. It's borrowed into existence. It's value, it's purchasing power value. I think I'm done. But it's purchasing power value has been renewed, reduced via all this debt. Because every time they create new money, the value of what's already out there is lost. Gold has historically acted as a hedge against inflation. Unlike paper currencies, their value tends to rise when inflation is high. So investors turn to physical gold to preserve their wealth and purchasing power when traditional investments struggle to keep up. Gold spot prices are currently lower than in recent months, presenting a favorable buying opportunity for investors. Lynette Zhang, the founder of ITM Trading, argues that holding physical assets like gold and silver is a better form of savings than holding fiat currency. She points out that physical assets do not have any associated debt or counterparty risk. At the same time, Fiat currency is a debt instrument constantly depreciating due to the continuous creation of new money. Gold prices took a dip to their lowest in a week as the U.S. dollar neared its six-month pinnacle and U.S. Treasury yields saw an upswing. Expectations of persistently high interest rates spurred these moves. Lynette highlights the relationship between the spot gold market and the increasing U.S. debt, pointing out that the spot gold market, though manipulated, indicates that gold prices tend to rise in response to growing U.S. debt levels. Regarding the Federal Reserve's interest rate policies, Lynette expresses skepticism about their effectiveness in combating the inflation that the Fed itself had contributed to. She suggests that the Fed might attempt to regain credibility by raising interest rates, but acknowledges the uncertainty surrounding when and how these rate increases would occur. After surging to more than 9% in June 2022, inflation has dropped since then, though at 3.3%, it is still above the Federal Reserve's target of 2%. The persistent inflation prompted Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell to indicate that more interest rate increases may eventually be necessary. We will now bring you clips from Lynette Zhang's. But before we do, if you want more videos like this, hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell for more updates. Thank you and enjoy the video. When you look at the spot gold market and how that keeps pace, with the rising US debt. This, this gold line is the spot market. This goes back to 1970 and takes us through 2023. And you can see that once people realize it and once that cup formation is fully broken, it goes up to new levels. The markets are schizophrenic. One day they like what's happening. So woo, there's euphoria. Markets are up at all new time highs, high PEs, et cetera. But then the reality sets in and then they try and dump and then they got to keep them supported again. Because what do people do? They open up their 401k statement or their IRA statement and they go, oh, okay, things must be okay as long as the stock market is okay or as long as the bond market isn't too terribly bad. But look at all of these industries. Oops, let me grab a laser pointer. Look at all of these industries with the most distressed debt. That means they're already having trouble paying their debt. Other, which they're not specific about here, is the largest area. Real estate, telecommunications, retail, software and services, healthcare and pharma. There is a lot of corporate debt that is in deep, deep doo-doo. At the end of the week, marked by optimism, the Fed would be closer to ending its interest rate hikes. And aren't they coming out and talking about, well, the Fed's at the end of the road, probably at the end of the road. Maybe we'll get one more. Maybe we won't. Maybe it'll be a soft landing. Hey, maybe we'll avoid recession. That is such garbage. Look at this. Don't believe their lies anymore. Because how many times can you be lied to when you do not know the truth? Every single flipping time. The uncertain scale of the lagged effect of prior interest rate hikes means that both recession and a Federal Reserve policy error remain potential risks. Yeah, think, because I definitely do think that that is what we're seeing. So how do you think if they, if they are going to fight the inflation that they created, sorry, Randy, fight the inflation that they created, how are they doing that? by raising the interest rates. 
I personally think we're going to see a pivot at some point, but I can't tell you when. Is there going to be another rate raise? Well, yeah, they're trying to get back their credibility. Remember when they gave it up last June? Not last June, a year ago last June. I was amazed that they were so stupid to give it up. But give it up, they did. Now they're fighting back for their credibility and that creates a danger because you have all of the kahunas, not just the central bank kahunas, but your business kahunas, Warren Buffett's and Jamie Dimon's and all this trotting out going, oh, everything is hunky-dory, no recession, blah, blah, blah. The reality is, is that banks say conditions for loans to businesses and consumers will keep getting tougher. Moving forward, Lynette also highlights domestic banks' tightening of credit standards for commercial and industrial loans. This phenomenon historically coincided with official recessions. U.S. domestic banks reported a widespread tightening of lending standards by the end of the first quarter of 2023, even before the full impact of the regional banking crisis had been felt. Stricter lending criteria are likely to slow the flow of credit to small businesses and households, amplifying the impact of interest rate increases by the Federal Reserve over the last year. The net percentage of domestic banks tightening standards for commercial and industrial CNI loans to small businesses with annual sales below $50 million hit plus 47% at the end of the first quarter. Lynette emphasizes that these lending standards also affect consumers, particularly regarding credit card loans, which are also experiencing tightening conditions. Additionally, Lynette discusses the volume of maturing commercial property loans from various lenders starting in 2023 and extending to 2027. These loans are associated with collateralized loan obligations and commercial mortgage-backed securities, often included in investment products such as IRAs and pensions. Lynette expresses concern about the exposure of regional and national banks to these maturing loans and how it affects the entire banking sector, not just a few banks. Let's get back to the interview. Well, this is from the Fed, the Federal Reserve Education Department, and this is the net percentage of domestic banks tightening standards for commercial and industrial loans to large and middle market firms. So this is very similar to what's also happening with smaller firms. So here's your businesses and it's tight. And you can see quite interestingly that when it got tight in the past, was with these gray bars, which are official recessions. Now we're up at those levels and no, no recession. Why? Because of all of the money printing that they did. All that did is push it off or push the appearance of it off because not everybody is in the same boat, but it's also for consumers as well. So let's see what that looks like. This is net percentage of domestic banks tightening standards for credit card loans. Just as one example. And so you can see that that too is tightening. So you got to ask yourself, is the party over? Right? The, the game of musical chairs. You know, who's going to be left out? Let's not have it be you. This is the volume of maturing commercial property loans by lender starting in 2023. So this year. And it's from all of the different lenders. Let's just look, this one goes through 2027. So over the next four and a half years, and it includes CLOs, collateralized loan obligations, which the, the Bank for International Settlements have talked about, but all of these commercial mortgage-backed securities, investor-driven, private government agency insurance. So these are all the entities that invest in commercial property loans that are maturing, that you buy these products and they're put in your IRAs, your pensions. It's, it's those institutional investors that invest your money. That's your skin in the game, not theirs. They're just making money from it. And then the last three, International Bank, which is this dark blue, the medium blue is the national bank, and then the light blue are the regional banks. The role of gold as a hedge against inflation is likely to persist with investors seeking to safeguard their wealth amid the uncertainties surrounding traditional investments. The Federal Reserve's efforts to combat inflation through interest rate policies will undoubtedly shape the economic landscape in the coming years. What are your thoughts on the future of gold and fiat currencies in today's uncertain economic landscape? Please share your thoughts in the comments section below. If you found this video informative, 
Remember to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and enable notifications to stay informed about our latest videos on silver, gold, and copper. Thank you for watching, and we appreciate your support.